going on YouTube? Welcome back to this video. Today we're going to carry over with Docker containers vulnerabilities. Now today's video we're going to talk about how to escape a Docker container into or from a Docker container shell into a root shell or any regular user shell. So say you have got access to a container. In this example I am using a uh, TryHackMe machine as you can see, it's assuming that you have got access to a container. So that's the uh, shell we have, as you can see, when you first get access to a container. You may get access to a container by compromising a web server, a vulnerable web server, or any vulnerable application that is running inside a container while you are doing pen testing. So you may get surprised, oh, I am inside a container. When you get access, you see yourself inside a container instead of a regular username or regular shell. So that's the, uh, as you can see, the shell is kind of different. This is the host name of the container. If we execute ID, we can see that the user Danny is part of a Docker group, which means that Danny can run Docker commands, which is essential to escape from the Docker container. If the user that we get access to doesn't have permissions uh, or doesn't have a membership inside the Docker group, it means it cannot execute Docker commands and most of your enumeration abilities will be hindered inside the container. So this is very important to check when you first get access to a container. Now the next thing we want to check to make sure that we really enter the container is to check that there is a Docker socket file. As you can see, when I listed the contents of this directory, I first I tried with var run, but it has symbolic link to v to run so I saw that there is this file, docker.socket, which means, so essentially docker socket is a file that will let you communicate with the dockers and execute commands. It uses the Unix file system sockets, but sometimes it uses the TCP IP socket or networking socket. So this is very essential if you saw this. It will help you to understand more about the environment. So once we see Docker socket, it means we can communicate somehow with the Docker remotely or from inside the container. We can run, we can run commands to check the running containers. So basically, as you can see, I run this command. So Docker dash H TCP, and this is the IP address of the machine, and this is the port 2375. And here I have a remark for you guys. So if you are scanning a machine and you see this port open, 2375, it means that a Docker diamond is running on the machine and you can communicate with that Docker and execute commands to list the containers and the images. Now, this command is run from inside the container. It's supposed to work because I'm running the command locally. But what if I run the command outside the container, right? So. Again, if you see this port open, it means that there is Docker diamond running. And then, the next step would be to enumerate the Docker. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about this later. Okay, so I executed this command to check the available containers running. As you can see, we have these containers. Using Storm, Breaker, Goofy, Diffy, Brave, Mendel, and Registry Example, Registry 1, Registry Actual, Registry 1 and along with the other information about them, the command used to run the container, when it was created, the status, and the ports. Now, as you can see here, guys, check the ports, 7,000 and 5,000. These two ports are used simultaneously to run a Docker registry that stores Docker images. And this is indicated by the names used to run these containers, registry example, registry one, and registry actual registry one. These two containers have Docker images inside them. They are used to, to store Docker images. That's why they're called Docker registry. And we have these containers, Music Stormbreaker, it's running an SSH server. As you can see on port 2244, Goofy Diffy runs another HSH server on port 2255, and Brave Mendel, Mendel is another container that's running an HSH server on port 2233. 
So these are the containers running on the host with the function of every single one of them. Now, if you want to retrieve the list of the images inside these containers, we can use the same command, guys. But instead of PS, we use images. And as you can see here, guys, we can check all of the images inside the containers. So for example, we have, um, let's see here. So we have these images, namespaces listed to, host namespaces, privileged container, container socket. And we see this one, Docker Ruido 5000 dive challenge. So this is a Docker container that is stored in the Docker registry running on port 5000, this one. Highlighted by, as I am highlighting here. And this repository contains this image. Also, we have dive slash dive shell example, slash dive slash challenge on the same container. And we have slash web server, secret solution slash web server. And the same image is running on the other container on port 7000. At the same time, as you can see here, this repository slash semantic slash my app one is running these images. My app one, Alpine, DBN with the tag of every single one of them. So this one here, this uh, Docker repository contains more than one image and they are listed here. All right, so, so we listed the running containers. We know the, every single image running inside the containers. What are our options here? Now, we have many options, but we have to focus on the goal here. The goal is to escape the container. So one of the methods to escape the container is to mount the complete file system to a directory we choose. To be, to do, to be able to do that, I remind you guys that we need the user you, you have got access to needs to be part of the Docker group. If it is not, you cannot proceed with the rest of the uh, steps. So if we want to run the file system to a Docker we choose, uh, so to a directory we choose, first you have to choose a directory and we have to choose a container. The container will host that complete file system. So if you don't see, if you see containers, but you don't see images, you cannot run this command. You cannot mount a complete file system because ultimately the file system that you're going to mount, the host file system, right? It will be mounted to a directory that will be running on a container. So there has to be a, a Docker image on the machine so that it hosts the uh, file system that we're going to mount. If there is no Docker image, if there is only containers with no images, it's not going to work. But of course, since we got access to uh, a Docker container that is running an FSS server, uh, at least we can use, we can upload our own image somehow. All right, so docker run dash v, and here we specify the directory we want to mount. Here we are mounting the full the full uh, host file system. So we use slash, slash mnt is the directory to which the complete file system will be mounted. And then we use the image, we use alpine. Okay, and then we change the root to slash mount, so the root file system will be uh, mounted to slash mount, directory we chose, and then we execute shell. Once we execute this command, given that the user is part of the Docker crew, and given that Alpine is a valid image, a valid Docker image inside the machine, as you can see, the prompt has changed, and now we see the complete file system. As you can see here, if you're on ID, you can check that you are the user root. That is one of the methods to escape Docker containers, okay? By mounting the complete file system. Of course, I talked about the conditions. I don't need to repeat. The other method here, the other method is kind of different. It relies on using the namespaces. So essentially namespaces are uh, used to segregate and isolate resources. So every process runs on a different namespace on the operating system.
And that's how processes are uh, kind of controlled from accessing other processes' resources, memory and files, and so on and so forth. So namespaces are essentially are essential for the function of the operating system. Now, if we launch PS AUX, okay, uh, let's check the process IDs. As you can see, we have this. All right, so let me first exit. Okay. All right, and connect again. Okay. So PS AUX, one more time. All right. So we mentioned that namespaces are used to segregate system resources, and every process is running on a different namespace. Now, what this has to do with containers? Now, every container, again, say applies on containers. So all containers, say these containers we saw previously. So these containers, for this one and this one, these containers run on different namespaces. So every container has its own namespace, okay? So that resources are successfully segregated. Okay. Now this has to do with the, what what this has to do with the current scenario. Essentially, one of the methods to escape a Docker shell is to um, again mount the complete file system, but we want to execute commands as uh, the uh, namespace of the system MD or the system uh, process. The system process, as you can see, essentially has the PID of one. So we want to kind of impersonate the namespace of that process and execute, execute commands as this process. But how can we do this? We need to, to change the namespace or to execute commands using the namespace of that process. For that reason, we have to use a tool called NSEnter. So NSEnter. As you can see, it's a tool to run a program in different namespaces. So we want to run the uh, mount, okay, the mount tool using the namespace of this process so that we have the ultimate privileges. That's how we can escape, or that's another method of escaping running containers. Okay, what are the prerequisites of using this method? The prerequisites or what the single prerequisite to execute this method successfully is to have access to a container as the root of the container. Now, previously, as you can see, we have got access to a container, but as the user Danny. The namespace method won't work here. Here, it will work because we have got access to a root, to the root of the container. Make sure, uh, Make sure uh, to verify this fact if you want to apply this method. So ID, I am the root of the container. Okay. Now, simply, what we can do here, we can, let's copy the command directly and paste it. So NS enter, I explained earlier, it's used to execute a program in the namespace of another program. Dash dash target equal one. So why one? Because one is the namespace of the the highest privileged process in the system, which is the system MD in Ubuntu maybe, or system process. In Windows, it's the system process. So it has the namespace of one. So when we specify that here, we'll be able to execute commands, okay, using the namespace of that process. Hence, or therefore, we will be able to execute the commands in a privileged node. The command I chose is dash dash mount, and then I will execute shell. As you can see, the prompt has changed, IT, and now I am the root user of the file system. PWD, I am inside the, as you can see, I'll be able to see the complete files on the file system. That's the other method of um, using or, or escaping Docker containers. Okay, you can find all of them here in the uh, notes. If you're not subscribed to the channel membership, you can subscribe and get access to the notes. Notes are some of them online. Uh, you can find them in the online portal and some of them are in PDF files. So 
that was it guys i hope you enjoyed the video and i will see you later